The best way, of course, to avoid churn is to uh, have your customers be successful, see value, and ultimately that will result in them growing their solution with you. Today I have with me Perry Monaco from LinkedIn. Hey there, Perry. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. Thanks for joining me and uh, sharing your nuggets of customer success wisdom with the with our YouTube uh, followers. Happy to be here. Looking forward to it. Awesome. So today I want to talk about expansion selling. You know, I get so many emails from uh, customer success professionals that they hit their target on retention, but for some reason, you know, expansions, it's kind of like one-off. Every now and then there's like this ad hoc sense of, you know, capturing opportunities and actually following through with them. There's a lot of the dependencies on other teams. And I thought to myself, why don't we get Perry here to share best practices around how LinkedIn does it. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I think I should probably start off by saying that by no means have we nailed this in any way, but we certainly have thought about it and, uh, you know, use the term ad hoc. And you're absolutely right there that there are still ad hoc campaigns that we do execute. But there's also some things that we do from a reoccurring perspective to make sure that we're trying to always refresh that pipeline and make sure that our customers are seeing value. Ultimately, I think the best upsell opportunities that you have as an organization is when your customers see the value and what it is that they're executing from your solution perspective, um, and it helps them move their business along. So it should be a win-win, right? Absolutely. So, you know, half the people that listening to this uh, or watching this YouTube video, they don't even, you know, do any kind of campaigns. They really just get an opportunity as it comes. But even there, I think there's opportunities to make it better. But for today, what I'd like to focus on is data-driven campaigns. And I like the operative word that you said, bringing value to customers. And I, I'd like you to share sort of like the framework of how you guys are thinking through when you start designing a campaign for expansion. Mm -hmm. You know, where do you, where do you start? What do you think about? You bring up a good point because a lot of times we think about upsell opportunities when they're put in front of us because we are spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to mitigate churn or sometimes we're just trying to figure out how to get through the day, right? Um, customer success is certainly not a you know very established industry at this particular point in time. And so some of the time we're trying to figure things out as we go. But I think the first thing that any organization can do to ensure that they're maximizing the opportunity for both the organization, but also for their customers, is to identify what the outcome should look like. Ultimately, what do our customers want to accomplish uh, with the product? And then ultimately, what is it that, th that an upsell opportunity or a future investment into, or further investment, excuse me, into our solution is gonna help them accomplish as an organization? So number one, we need to figure out where we want to be before we react to the opportunity that could be in front of us. <clears throat> There's also the situation that organize, organizations get into where sometimes we're selling to the wrong customer, right? And so sometimes that happens because we haven't truly identified what the outcome is that we want it to be. So that would be the first step. So the first step is really trying to solve a certain problem that customers have or identify opportunities for additional use cases or some sort of a way to add value to customers. So essentially you, you're thinking, okay, what's the problem we see most of our customers have and how can we solve it? And that's how you design the campaign is around that. Exactly. The second step then, of course, is an extension of that is, and that's when you, once you under, understand what the outcome should be or what the program should be, you want to make sure that you then define the offering. You, in an ideal situation, take away as much guesswork from the sales team as possible. Not every salesperson is having to reinvent the wheel or coming up with their own messaging. This is something that really you can own as a CS leader and then present that back to the CSMs or sales, sales team, whichever it is that, that might be most appropriate. But defining the, the offering in the sense of what business problem are you trying to solve and how is your solution going to get them there? Um, that's really going to help you move the needle as it relates to any upsell opportunities that exist. 
And so once you define the problem, you define the solution, does the solution sometimes include more than just a certain feature or a function or a module or a different product that they can buy into? Yeah, sometimes it can be um, they buy into your professional services model. It could be that they are um, introduced to a partner or a, another channel partner, or it could be all sorts of different things that could um, ultimately get them to where they want to go. But because there can be so many different levers that your team can pull, defining that for them and helping them you know, define that clear line between from A to B can be super helpful. And it sounds like you're essentially feeding the salesperson or the sales team what the problem and the solution is going to be, and then they're the ones running with it? Yes and no, because the third step, it's almost like you know what I'm gonna say. Third step is to find those triggers, right? Is to identify based on past behavior of your customers, based on what you know about the industry, based on what you know your solution is hopefully going to solve for, find out those moments along the customer life cycle or those different um, things that a customer could say or do or demonstrate that will trigger the sales team to know, hey, wait a minute, based on what I'm hearing or based on what the situation is presenting, I now know with reasonable certainty that there is a desirable outcome here as it relates to a solution that I could potentially put in front of this customer. And so that trigger will then enable them to go ahead and action what just happened. So when you package it all up, what does it include? I, I believe it's like a list of all the customers that might have a propensity for this problem slash solution offering. And then what else? Do you give them like a Google Doc, a SharePoint site? Like how do you package it up for them so it's consumable? Us personally? <clears throat> well, yeah. I mean, it could be really be anything that works for your organization, obviously. Um, if you want to be lean and mean, a lot of times we're lean and mean, so it's a Google Doc, or more appropriately for us, it would be an Excel spreadsheet. Um, but it can also be a little bit more sophisticated. It could be something that is a, a report that's generated in Salesforce or whatever CRM With that you're the using. Names. Exactly. With account names and maybe sort of you can even prioritize the list as well based on the number of um, the number of triggers that have been activated by that particular customer. So then instead of just giving a list of 100 potential customers, you can say of this 100, the first 25 are the most um, the ones that you should prioritize first because they've hit multiple triggers, whereas the ones at the end are maybe the ones that you uh, get to only if you have time. So I'm really curious, what did you find is the best way to just coach everyone on the solution and the problem and how to talk about it? Well, I think it's uh, it's just like what you would say to the customer, what's in it for me, right? Um, a salesperson has a goal or a CSM has a goal that they need to get to. This will help enable you to get to that goal. If you don't do this, getting to your goal is going to be that much harder. And so generally speaking, the buy-in is relatively easy. I think sometimes what can be a challenge is when you are trying to upskill your CSMs to move away from selling a product or a service or a widget to selling a solution, or at least presenting the option of a solution. That's much harder to do. It's easy to sell a widget in a sense, right? Um, it's harder to say, you can buy the widget, but if you buy this widget and this thing over here and this thing over here and supplement it with a monthly um, purchase here, that can help create this ecosystem that can help you get to where you want to go faster. That's much harder to do and requires a level of sophistication that sometimes our teams don't have. And so there would be education required there and um, it can take us longer to get there. I know you talked about customer campaign blitzes in the past when we did the mm. TSW presentation. Do, can, you, can you share like with the audience, what is that? Sure, <laughs> we, we used to do call blitzes much more often than we do now, but call blitzes are, were really fun. They were both for, so we have a separated sales team and CSM team. And so we used to do call blitzes for both, and we would define a theme for the blitz, depending on what it is that we were trying to accomplish. Sometimes the theme aligned with whatever happened to be going on that month. So in October, guess what the theme was? It was always a costume theme. Um, uh, or it was a theme that was related to whatever um, we were trying to accomplish in that particular day. And so ultimately, it was based on two, two different parts. 
The first part was, like we just spoke about, was identifying the outcome that we wanted to achieve with this blitz. And then based on that, looking at our list of customers that we wanted our teams to prioritize. Sometimes we did that for our teams and then sometimes we would give the teams time to be able to do that themselves. Mm. So then when blitz day came, the CSMs and sales teams had a list of people that they could call that was prioritized. And we would also enable them with a, with a, a little bit of a talk track in terms of how to get to where they wanted to go. And then we just said, go. And we gamified it. We gave out prizes. We had hourly updates. Uh, the managers would be on the floor supporting the team, answering any questions, refilling coffee, getting donuts, whatever the case may be. And then at the end, we celebrated the successes that we had. So ultimately, it was donuts? very we, hey, I'm in Canada, so we had donuts. Um, <laughs> we focused on a business outcome that we wanted to achieve, and that was all that we were calling about. It was very, very specific. We knew that there was a gap in user engagement or that there was an opportunity to um, sell a, a particular solution or even a product. And mm -hmm. that was all that we were focused on, and we enabled the team to you know, put their out-of-offices on and just focus on that for the entire half day. Um, and we see really good success with those kind of campaigns. That's that's really brilliant. I gotta say, I don't know a lot of customer success management teams that do these kind of blitzes. Most of them have, mm. you know, just listen to customers. And if they feel like the customer is really qualified to expand, then they would bring in the salesperson or, or if they own the quota that they would pursue it themselves. Uh, but kind of proactively doing blitzes, that's that's an incredible um, initiative. I think it's really the definition of customer success, of being proactive mm -hmm. in creating this awareness with customers on additional solutions and value that they can get from, the, from your solution. So one of the other benefits of the blitzes is that allows the CSM to focus on one singular outcome of that phone call. The reality of phone calls with our customers is that we're constantly having to change gears. We don't know what our customer is going to say when we call them. And so when we call during a call blitz and we have that singular focus, the CSM has permission to potentially move that conversation to a later date or another time if the customer isn't reacting to the potential of, of an upsell opportunity or learning more about it. Um, because they are singularly focused and there is that gamification that goes along with the call blitz. And so it can actually provide for a much better outcome for the CSM and for the customer because it puts the CSM in a mind frame where they don't have to constantly be shifting gears. And then it also allows our customer to feel heard um, and to uh, ensure that when we do talk to them about their potential issue, we're doing it when we're in the right frame of mind as well. So I really like blitzes for all sorts of reasons. It's a great team yeah. builder as well. The team generally really rallies around one another um, and they end up being a lot of fun. I bet it also um, an opportunity to have the senior guys teach the more junior guys and have a lot of knowledge transfer happen. Um, I discussed this with one of my customers out after we did our TSW presentation. And uh, we talked about the notion of doing a blitz but the team is not really salesy. Usually they mm -hmm. would just identify an expansion opportunity and just send it over to the sales rep. They would never actually, you know, create an awareness, certainly not proactively. And so one of the things that they wanted to do was to take these blitz campaigns and just promote adoption campaigns versus expansion campaigns. Do you feel like this is a good way to transition into expansion campaigns? Just trying first to just expand on adoption without the monetary conversation and then graduate into something that does involve an upsell or a cross-sell? Absolutely. I think a big part of understanding your customer is understanding what it is that they're trying to accomplish. And a lot of times a customer has a particular solution in front of them. A CSM should challenge the solution in front of the customer. A lot of times when we find that there is a disconnect between their business outcome and their current solution, the solution is actually for them to expand their, their investment. 
um, because they just don't have the right tools in front of them or enough of those tools to get to where they want to go. Well, awesome. I want to thank you for your time today. This was very insightful. I hope anybody that's watching this YouTube video would learn a lot and take some of it home to their own organization and start doing these blitz campaigns with the sales team, with the CSM team and whomever else. We're also going to have the formal framework that Perry shared and we've developed a formal framework based on the LinkedIn approach that's available for everyone here. Just check the comments below to download it and best of luck with your expansion selling, cross selling, upselling, increasing use cases, whatever it is. <laughs> Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, like this video if you liked Perry's uh, words of wisdom. I certainly did. Leave a comment if you have questions for him. He will respond. And I'll see you at the next video.